Technical Timeout, Episode 2. Come up with ideas, try them out, see if they work, and if they work, great. If they don't work, oh well, you know. Coming straight from Jump Volleyball Studios in the heart of Hamilton, Ontario, welcome to Technical Timeout, the podcast that digs into the habits of successful volleyball coaches. Now here's your host, Louis-Pierre Mangville. Hey guys, LP Mainville here. I'm your host, and I want to welcome you to this second episode of Technical Timeout, the podcast in which I try to find out what makes great volleyball coaches by interviewing them. It's that simple. So Technical Timeout is the official podcast of Jump Volleyball Training, a volleyball program based out of Hamilton, Ontario, whose goal is to empower young volleyball players and coaches so they unleash their full potential. Jump Volleyball Training offers clinics, private coaching, and summer camps where former professional players share their knowledge and experience. So if you want to know how Jump Volleyball Training can help you and your team, go to jumpvolleyball.com. And if you go to jumpvolleyball.com forward slash podcast, you will also find all the info about this show. So by the way, guys, if you want to help me keep this show free for everyone, one simple thing you can do is to go to Amazon through the link on our website if you have to buy something on that website. It's an affiliate link, which means that you pay the same price you would normally pay, but we get a small cut that helps running the show. So this episode is part of our uh, super launch week. Um, What does that mean? Well, it means that it is one of the six episodes I am releasing in the first week of the show being live on iTunes. After that, it will go down to one episode a week and sometimes two episodes when I have some special guests to bring to you guys. So in this launch period, you will hear interviews with amazing coaches. Glenn Hogue, Tori Caputo, Brock Daviduk, Larry McKay, Brenda Willis, and today's guest, Heather Brinkman. Heather is a former international player who represented Canada on the national team between 1999 and 2002. She played professionally for six years in countries like Spain, France, and Portugal. She played at that level because volleyball is her passion. Her hard work and discipline made her a top-level middle player, and she now shows the same kind of dedication towards coaching. And this is why I absolutely wanted to have her on the show and to get her to share her knowledge with you guys. In this episode, you will find out who is the legendary coach who inspired her to become a coach herself, and you will learn her tricks on training middle players. We also talk about communication and mentors and a lot of other stuff. Heather is someone I love working with and someone I learn from all the time. I'm sure you guys will learn lots from her as well. I hope you enjoy the show, and without further ado... Here's Heather Brickman. Heather, welcome to the show. How's life in London, Ontario? Oh, it's great. A little bit chilly, but good. Sun is yeah. shining. Yeah, I guess uh, for our listeners at the time this interview is being recorded, it is probably around, what, minus 20, minus uh, 25 in uh, Ontario, Canada? Yeah, it's been cold. Yeah, it's been a cold winter, but uh, this interview will be will warm us up because... Guys, I've known Heather for quite a while. Actually, she is married to a former teammate of mine, uh, Steve Brinkman, I played with on the national team. And this is how we met. And uh, through the years, I've also had the chance to coach with Heather a couple of times. And I'm so excited to have her on the show because she's such an amazing coach. And there is a lot to learn from Heather's experience as a coach. So Heather, I can't wait to ask um, the questions I have for you. So I'm going to ask you, are you ready to take this technical time out with us? I'm ready. I'm excited too. Awesome. Let's start with you telling us and telling our listeners where you're at right now, uh, where you coach and who you coach. Uh, Well, like you said, LP, I'm in London right now. And uh, we recently moved here last August. Uh, So I'm I'm helping out with Western's women's women's team. And I'm a guest coach with a a club here for city and uh, loving being in the gym here with some new athletes, new to me athletes. Wow. So you keep yourself busy, but it doesn't surprise me given how passionate I know you are about volleyball and about coaching. 
And I would kind of like to know how you developed that passion. So you didn't start off coaching at the university level. So maybe explain to us how you got into coaching and how it all started for you. Uh, well, I started when I was in university. There were some opportunities at the school I went to to coach in the summer at the summer camp. So I started doing that and uh, over the years just kept kept doing summer camps and uh, building a network of people that I worked with and worked for and uh, continued doing that until I guess I stopped playing and uh, got involved more during the year with some teams and clubs and uh, with region te regional team. And um, now that we're in Canada full time, um, I can be involved full time with a club or with a team, which is great. So I'm doing that with Western and then hoping to do some more camps and teams, regional teams in the summer. Awesome. So you started coaching when you were still playing in university. Um, where did you go to school? I played at Gonzaga University. It's a small school, mostly known for its basketball, but they have a good volleyball program there as well in Spokane, Washington. Okay, so you went down to the United States to play? I did. Yeah, how did you like that experience? It was great. It was great. Uh, really good um, climate around sport there. You know, there's lots of support, lots of people come out. Um, yeah, it's, it was yeah. great. And and that's where you were introduced to coaching, I guess. Yes. So what? Um, how did it happen? Did, was it your coach that asked you to come and help, or did you? Um, well, our coach encouraged us as athletes to be involved. You know, earn a little bit of money, be in the gym, uh, learn, and it's incredible. And you can probably attest to this: um, how much you learn as a player when you start coaching. You know, it just brings a different level of awareness to um, the skills that you're you're doing every day and have the game oh absolutely that is so true and i definitely think that one of the best ways to learn is to teach and as a matter of fact i've seen coaches that will ask their 17 year olds and their 16 year old players to come and help out with the 14 year olds and the 13 year olds so that these players can actually share their knowledge and that way they can get better and they can learn the skills that they teach a little bit better Now, you were young when you started coaching, and you were still a player, so I'd like you to answer a question here. What was the biggest challenge you faced when you started coaching? Um, well, I can, I can answer that because, like you're saying, you know, when you're young and you're a player, and it's, you learn a lot about yourself as a player, so um, learning to articulate skills that, you, that are kind of second nature, you know? Um, changing that into language that is accessible to younger athletes. And yeah, I guess that's sometimes difficult, things that we just kind of do without thinking about them well, and then thinking about how to explain that in a, in a good way to younger athletes. That was a bit of a challenge for me. Oh, for sure. I totally understand. And I'm glad that you bring it up because that's definitely a challenge that I've been facing. And I know that there must be a lot of coaches out there that were players before and that are struggling with the same thing. You know, coaches, like, have you ever thought, oh my God, how can't my athlete do this? It seems so simple to me. But in fact, the challenge is just to communicate that skill that you know so well, you know, just to communicate it with your athlete. Now, Heather, since so many coaches must be struggling with that, I want to know, how did you deal with that? How did you become better at communicating those uh, those skills to your athletes i would say that i became better at that by by observing other coaches more experienced coaches and just asking questions um you know if there's some great resources out there for more experienced coaches that answer these questions so just uh, being aware of those resources and uh, just learning you know there's lots to learn 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 what a message to share with all the coaches listening out there Because, you know, as coaches, we spend most of our time trying to get our athletes and our players to learn, but we sometimes forget about ourselves. But it's important that us, ourselves, coaches, we also learn. And Heather, that's the way that you had to overcome that big challenge that you faced when you started coaching. You decided you were going to learn from other coaches. Um, who were those, those, uh, those coaches you learned from? Yeah, they were my university coaches or sort of the lead coaches, the head coaches of the camps that I was working at. So I was kind of their, would be their helper and they do most of the talking. 
And so, and then I'd go and run drills and reinforce what they were teaching, um, but also learn myself at the same time. So, so you were mentored, I guess, by some of those coaches, the lead coaches and the coach at your university. Any particular coach that had a very big influence on you? Um, yeah. So I wouldn't, I, I was lucky enough to work and hoping to work again with um, Bill Neville. So he's got a very impressive bio in volleyball, as anybody in volleyball knows. So I had the opportunity to work with him for several years or work for him um, and learned a lot from him and hope to do so, uh, continue to do so. So I consider him a, a mentor of mine. That's awesome. Was he your coach? No, he uh, at the time, I think he maybe he had just retired from coaching at University of Washington. So he was a coach there for a long time. And um, a girl that I that I went to high school with played for him and uh, put me in touch with him uh, to work summer camp. So that's how I started working for him through an athlete, Amy Tut. I think she's maybe Amy Bridges now. And it, it was great, a really great learning opportunity for me. Well, that's a, that's a cool story. And, and now you've got me all curious about, uh, about that coach, about Bill. And I feel like I'm going to have to have him on the show because... Now I feel like I have so many questions for him. If he had such a big influence on you, um, knowing how good of a coach you are, I think it'd be very interesting to, to ask him a few questions for the benefit of our, of our listeners. Now, guys, I think that the takeaway from what Ather said in the last few minutes is really to not be afraid of, of asking questions to, to other coaches and to try to always learn and perfect our own skills as, as coaches. Um, I think you know that, but sometimes it's good to be reminded and we can thank Heather for that today. Now, Heather, you've been coaching for about what, like 15 years now? Are yeah, you something. are you still learning today? Definitely. I think every time you step in the gym as a coach, you can learn from other coaches, whether they have a lot more experience than you do or less experience, even from the athletes, how they respond to what you say. Uh, every time you're in the gym is a great learning opportunity. So awesome stuff you've been sharing with us so far, uh, Heather. And now let's just get technical okay? okay so we are going to get into a little bit of of your strengths because we want to get to know you a bit more as a coach and we want to know what makes you a special coach because i know how special of a coach you hmm. are and i want everyone to know about that so we're, you know we know that every coach has strengths and we want to and when you, we want to know what yours are so the first thing i'm going to ask you is um, what would you say the you know what would you say is the skill technical or tactical you're the best at coaching? Um, I'd say middle middle offense um, and transition and tactics. I'd say that's that would be one of my strengths as a coach. Middle offense, transition and tactics. Mm -hmm. That's I was that's, a middle that, player just like you, LP. Oh yeah. Well, I was just going to yeah. ask: is that is that how you? how you develop that strength as a coach? I think, I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, and just watching watching and learning about the game. I think there's lots, so much potential with um, you know, developing strong middles. Mm -hmm. What about the middle position do you like to, um, to coach and to teach your athletes? Because there's so much to it, but there must be certain things that you feel that you coach better than other coaches, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. and what, what would that be? Offensively, hitting hitting balls behind the setter, I think I'm good at teaching that. Um, just giving middle players. I think a lot of the time with younger athletes, nobody wants to play middle, or girls are kind of reluctant to play middle. Or I'm, you know, you just kind of stick somebody there. But there's so much potential there, and there's so many fun things you can do. And um, whether you get to touch the ball or not, you know, if you can pull a blocker, that's a great feeling. You know, if you can create a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for somebody and teach girls to everything from hitting, you know, a first tempo ball and learning how to do that. And uh, the satisfaction young athletes get out of learning some of those skills is just great. That's, that's awesome that you say that because it is true that being a middle can be sometimes a little bit difficult because yeah, you don't, <laughs> you don't get, you don't get set a lot if the passes are not there. Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, you'll do a great job blocking, but you won't touch the ball and you won't get a block the whole game, but you know, you've positioned your block perfectly and you've allowed your defense to make some important digs. You, like you said, you know, you've pulled the blocker uh, with you, you got the blocker to commit and now it opened some one-on-one -on -one opportunities for your outside hitters, but young athletes don't see that. 
they want to be, I guess, the ones who, who hit the ball and mm -hmm. they want to be more involved. How do you convince like young athletes that playing as a middle is fun? Well, I think one of the reasons why, like, interesting, you just said that people want to be the, the, the go-to person or the person who gets to attack the ball. But a lot of the times, um, it's a challenge for middles to be available to, to get set. So that's one of the reasons why I like working with the middles is to get them available so that they can get set, to be more verbal, and to let the setter know that they're there, that they want the ball, those kinds of things. That, that'll get them set. So um, working towards doing that. Letting the setter know they're available. That's, that's super important for the middle players out there. And that's something that as coaches, we don't often tell our athletes because, yeah, in a practice, there's so much stuff we need to go there's over. There's so much. It's true. Yeah. So sometimes we just, we just forget about these things. While we're talking about this, I'm curious to know if you have kind of a go-to drill that you use with your middle players in order to achieve those goals of of making the middles available? Well, I'd, I like in, in warm-up, if we're doing a hitting warm-up, to have the middles hit um, two or three, maybe even four balls in a row and challenge them to hit a few different sets. And if you're doing something, <clears throat> a team drill, uh, have middles, middle only middles can score. Um, so that, that's a drill that I really like, but it's one that you kind of have to, to work towards, um, you know, to build building things. So you've got to have the basics there to do a, a drill like that, but... Um, yeah, having specific players only can score, can only score running certain things. So it'll really challenge middles to be up in transition if, if that's the only way your team can score. Uh, yeah, they, be there. They won't have the choice but to be there. It's yeah. not like their teammates are going to be, hey, yeah. like, get up there. We need you to score the ball. Right. That's good. Well, you know, those, those two exercises you said, you know, having this, the middles hitting a few balls in a row during warm up or only having the middles allowed to score those are drills that can be done with players at different levels so Definitely. if you're a coach out there and you want to work with your middles and you want to use those drills that Ether just told you about um, you can definitely adapt those to the level of the uh, athletes you work with now Ether, i'd like to ask you if you use any particular tool to coach so whether it is a tool to help your athletes learn a certain skill or if it is a tool that you use to help you teach certain skills. I'd like to know if there is such a tool. And if so, what, what are they or what is it? Um, a certain tool that I use, you know, this is something that I'd like to work on developing uh, a little toolkit. I don't have too many tools that I use. I like to use an, an iPad sometimes to say coach's eye or an app like that. Um, but you really need more, Uh, bodies in the gym or coaches in the gym because I, I don't always think if you're alone or if there's just two of you I don't think that's always the best use of uh, your skills and your time is to be behind the device but I mean there's a time and place for that um, but yeah, other than that I mean I have some ideas I like uh, have some ideas with using balloons you know maybe uh, for reaching hands over I have some anchored balloons on the floor so maybe they're held down by I don't know a weight And you've got this a string up to the a balloon, and a lot of the times you do this with someone standing on a bench with a ball and reaching over. Um, but then we can take that person out of the drill and have them uh, on the other side blocking. So hands over, touching the balloon on the other side, getting it to move, and then you can move the balloon a little bit over or a little bit lower or a little bit higher and challenge athletes to reach. Uh, across the net I think that's a that's a hard skill to learn and to become good at it's really reaching to take up space on the other side of the net so um, that's an idea I have with balloons I haven't tried it out but I'm going to that's super interesting and I definitely want to to know how it went because I, know. I have worked with balloons before and actually used the balloons quite a lot but the anchored balloons i've never heard of and uh, you know i just thought of that the other day I, and you know that's something about coaching i think you know come up with ideas try them out see if they work and if they work great if they don't work oh well you know <laughs> great yeah come up with ideas coaches you know we're always or actually hear a lot of coaches say oh i don't know what drill to do and i don't know what exercise to do well just create them just invent them you know heather just told you about this idea of anchoring balloons and working with with their um, with her hitters like that and her blockers like that well she'll try it and if it works then she'll keep doing it and if it doesn't work then 
she'll just go and and try something new but i think that as coaches we can't be scared of trying new things and it's by trying them out that we'll actually get better and also be able to 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 share that with other coaches right like we said earlier and get other coaches to to do a better job with their athletes so awesome i like your creativity (laughs) and and i can't wait to see that into action i will let you know how it goes yeah absolutely um we uh, are done this part of the interview and we are going to get into the rapid fire question round. Okay. So you ready for that? I'm ready. Welcome to the rapid fire question round, Heather. So let's start with the first question, which is what is the word or the phrase that you use the most often during a practice? Mm, yes, uh, explosive, um, maybe work hard. If you, if you could go back in time to the moment you started coaching, what advice would you give yourself? Uh, <clears throat> keep a coaching journal, ask more questions, and uh, soak, in, soak in all the knowledge around me. Name one habit of yours that you think is related to your success as a coach. Uh, I stay po- I'm positive. Positive. Being positive Being all positive. the time. Yeah. Being positive as a coach and being positive with your athletes, I suppose, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. Share with us one of your favorite coaching quotes. Attitude is altitude. Uh, that or how, how you deal with failure will determine your success. Love them. Love those quotes. Do you know who, who they're from? I do not. Well, I guess I'll have to do some research but uh, <laughs> because I feel like uh, I've heard them before. But yeah, great quotes there. Is there a book that you would recommend for volleyball coaches out there? Um, I, I can't recommend a specific volleyball book, but uh, there's so many books uh, about great coaches like John Wooden, books he's written, books written about him. You know, there's lots of translation between different sports in terms of principles. Um, USA Volleyball also has a, some really good blogs. Um, so there are two, books and internet resource. There you go. <laughs> All right. Any particular internet resource? Because we, I would love to put them in the show notes so that our listeners can can uh, have access to them. Uh, I'd say there's there's some good articles on some of the USA volleyball volleyball blogs. So guys, if you go to technicaltimeout.com and you find Heather Brinkman's episode, you will find the link to that USA volleyball blog. I will put it out there so that you can have access to the same content that Heather is using to help her in their coaching. So Heather, that's all the time that we have today for this episode. Now, before I let you go, I just want to ask you if there is a way that coaches can maybe get in touch with you, um, whether it is via social media or on the website, just so that if they have questions or they want to get in touch with you, well, well, they can. Um, well, I'm hoping to be a guest blogger um, with Technical Timeout, and uh, plans are in the works to start a volleyball blog, a coaching blog of my own. So uh, I guess you can stay tuned um, on the site here for some more information about that. Yeah, that's true. So guys, Heather is going to be um, writing some blog articles for, for the website. That's awesome. I'm really, really happy that she, she agreed to do that. So you can read some of, her, some of her stuff there. And as soon as she has her home blog going, um, I will make sure to let you guys know. So Heather, thanks again. And I can't wait to be back in the gym with you soon. Yeah, same. See you soon. Good luck to all you coaches. Thanks. So guys, this is the end of our technical timeout. Thanks for listening and game on. Guys, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Heather. If you made it that far, it's because it was somewhat interesting. So if you have time to rate and review the show, it would be great if you did. And you know what? It would really help get this show to the ears of more coaches. So don't forget to check out the show notes for all the links and resources mentioned in this episode. And if you want to follow us on social media, well, you can follow us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash jump v ball and also on twitter at my um, just personal handle so at lp mainville no uh, twitter account for technical timeout yet so that's it thanks for making it through this uh, second episode i hope it didn't hurt your ears as much as the first one did 
And by the way, if you have any interview tips for me, well, feel free to send them my way. Now, let's get more coaches on the show and more straight up inspiration right into your speakers.